This conference will now be recorded. Hi, good evening. At uh, this point in time, I'd like to call the uh, meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission to order. This is our Monday, April 12th, 2021 meeting. If we'd all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And before we get started, I introduce the members of the uh, commission that are here this evening. I'd just like to start off with just giving some uh, overview as far as how this go-to meeting is going to be conducted. Uh, if your mic... If your microphone is uh, not muted, please mute it. If it's not possible, please be conscious of the noise around you as microphones on different devices have different uh, levels of sensitivity. And the go-to meeting system does not deal well with multiple sim simultaneous speakers. The audio from only one person will come through at a time. Therefore, please only speak if I acknowledge or recognize you. If there's an exchange going on between the presenter and a questioner, each must finish speaking before the other responding person can start. As a meeting organizer, I have a mute all button. If individuals are not participating respectfully, I'll be forced to mute all so the person who has the floor can be heard. If I mute all while you're speaking, please be patient. I will allow you to resume speaking as soon as reasonably possible. For members of the public who want to be heard during the meeting, there's a chat bar that you can open by clicking the icon that looks like a speech bubble on the right, upper right portion of the screen. When I ask for public comment, type into the chat bar that you'd like to speak. Each will be called upon in the order of their respective request to receive. I would request that the public only use the chat bar to indicate they would like to comment on an application and or have questions. Please refrain from using the chat bar to communicate between one another. It only makes my job more difficult to see who would like to comment or ask a question. Members of the public who have logged in to just watch, if you do not intend to participate in the meeting, please turn off your camera. If you've dialed uh, into the toll-free number and are listening through a traditional telephone, I have no way to identify you. I will not see your name or your telephone number. I will simply see you as caller one through, you know, whatever, depending upon the number of uh, people who've connected. I'll attempt to call on you for comment in the order in which the caller accesses the meeting. Those who log into the meeting through a smartphone or a computer, please select a screen name. Anyone speaking for the applicant or a member of the public must identify themselves by providing their name and address for the record. Uh, for those viewing the meeting, the agenda materials are posted on the town website. There's a tab on the right uh, side, second below the heading, this week's meeting. So that is generally how we're going to uh, conduct this evening's meeting. You know, at this point in time, I'd uh, like to introduce the uh, members of the commission that are uh, here this evening. I see we have uh, Mr. Benoit, who is our uh, Vice Chairperson. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Fitzsimmons, who is a Commission member, and I know I saw Mr. Cohan. We have Mr. Cohan. Uh, Mr. Matarazzo, I'm searching for you because you indicated to me you would be here. And we have Mr. Matarazzo, who is our uh, our Secretary. Uh, we also have uh, Jamie Hine, who is a uh, alternate on the commission. Also here is uh, Tom Talbot, who is our acting town planner. Cheryl Ann Tubby, who is our recording secretary. Amy Torrey, who is our uh, zoning enforcement officer. And I'm Jim Seichter. I'm the uh, chairperson. And I believe I've... Uh, noted every uh, member of the commission or staff that's here this evening. So with that, it brings us to our uh, 
first order of business, which is consideration of our minutes of our consideration for approval of our minutes of our March 8th, 2021 meeting. Does any commission members have any comments, additions, corrections to the minutes? And if there are none, then I would entertain a motion on uh, that or motion to accept the minutes. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we accept the uh, March 8th, 2021 minutes. We have a motion to accept the minutes. Uh, do we have a second? Mr. Chairman, I'll second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? With that, the uh, minutes are uh, minutes are approved. Brings us now to our uh, before we get to our first order of business. I'd like to make an announcement as far as what applications will not be heard this evening. First is a, a public hearing. It's a special permit convenience store fueling facility for 7-Eleven. Uh, the applicant uh, has again requested uh, that we continue the uh, public hearing until uh, our May meeting. Apparently, they are still waiting for uh, some information from the uh, Department of uh, Transportation. So that will be continued. The uh, next item is item number three, which is a special permit for 1070 North Farms Road, LLC. Uh, that application is uh, that applicant rather has also requested that we take no action on the application uh, as uh, their traffic study is uh, still in the process of being reviewed by a peer reviewer and uh, they would like to uh, again have that uh, continued to uh, our May meeting as uh, they would like to have the uh, peer review study completed. Which brings us to uh, our first item that we'll uh, hear tonight, which is a, uh, it's a public hearing. It's a uh, special permit for warehousing for Montani construction at five research parkway. Again, with this, the applicant has requested that we uh, open the public hearing, but continue it until uh, our May meeting and the applicant is not uh, making any presentation. So at this point in time, I would simply ask uh, that uh, Mr. Matarazzo, if you would read the uh, public uh, hearing notice, if you would. Um, m m Mr. Chairman, be, be, uh, po point of order, if I could, on this. Um, so my understanding, the way it's written here is we're gonna open the special permit, but basically we're gonna continue it to next month. That's There's not going to be any discussion. Public won't be allowed to speak. There's no application presentation. That's correct. So, you know, my, my question is, by doing this, you know, if we open it tonight, it starts the clock ticking, correct? Yeah. And, you know, does this cause us as a commission you know, any problem, you know, as far as uh, reviewing this application. It, it, to me, if we open it, it doesn't allow the public, it, it, it takes away a meeting from public comment as well. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering, um, are we doing a disservice to us and the public if we actually open this and start the clock without doing anything tonight? Well, I don't believe we are because I don't see how we're doing this. Sir. We're, the, the application, the applicant's not making a presentation. So to a large degree, there's really nothing, you know, nothing to discuss because there's the application <laughs> is not being presented. Uh, you know, I talked to our corporate counsel and she didn't have any uh, concern with doing that. As far as, you know, the clock running, it, it puts the applicant in a position, it doesn't put us in a position. Uh, there was an application, and I believe it was an application on this property uh, probably a year ago, two years ago, whatever. And uh, it came to, I, I believe there were some commission members 
you know, that were concerned in, in uh, the fact that we were, that the applicant ran out of time. And I think that was one of the reasons why at least one or two commission members, uh, you know, didn't, uh, or didn't feel comfortable approving the application because the applicant ran out of time. So, I mean, I'm looking at it, it puts the commission, it puts the applicant in a, uh, in, in a position where, you know, if we run out of time, if there's additional information that we're looking for and we're up against the clock, uh, that's the applicant's, you know, that's the applicant's problem. Also, I believe, Mr. Cavill, you can correct me, but with the executive orders, uh, the governor's executive orders, the time period on application where it needs to be acted on is extended by about three months or so. Yeah, it's still, it's, it's yeah. still, I mean, there is certainly plenty of time. Uh, I think it's about six months, much like the application for 7-Eleven. We heard that application in January, correct? And that clock doesn't run out of that until June. Is that correct? Right, yeah. right, right. Uh, yeah. So again, this is, this is what the applicants requested. I've talked to our town attorney on it and, uh, excuse me, our corporate counsel and she doesn't have an issue with it. She said it's a you know, proper thing to do. Okay, I, I appreciate the uh, explanation and I'm fine with it. I really, you know, just wanted to have it on the record. So I, well, I, I appreciate I, I it, Mr. Chairman. Well, I, clearly this is, I think for all the time, excuse me, for all the times I've been on the commission, I think this has been the first time that this has been, uh, you know, this has been requested. Yep, thank you. Sure. So again, Mr. Matarazzo, if you please uh, read the legal notice. Mr. Chairman, we have a legal notice number 401-21 special permit for a 219,000 square foot warehouse facility on 179.85 acres on property located at five Research Parkway, zones IX uh, WPD. Good, okay, thank you. Mr. Matarazzo, I'll ask you to just hold off noting all the items for the uh, record and that will be done at our uh, at the May meeting. Uh, I assume that there may very well be other items that'll be presented, but I would just like to, excuse me, if I, uh, if, if I may just read, you know, a communication that we did get from the, uh, from the applicant just to make people aware why they're uh, requesting the, uh, the action that they're requesting. It says, you know, the applicant Montanti Construction LLC respectfully asked that the commission open the public hearing on this matter on Monday, April 12, 2021, and immediately continue the public hearing to the commission's next regularly scheduled meeting on May 10th, 2021. The reason for this continuance is to allow additional time for the applicant to respond to comments and questions that have been raised by town staff and the commission's peer review consultant the applicant would present the application to the commission on May 10th. So with that, again, we have opened the uh, public hearing. There's no other comments from the commission. I'd entertain a motion to continue this to our uh, May meeting. Mr. Chairman, I just, uh, can I just um, raise an issue or make a comment uh, if Absolutely. I may? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my concern is a little bit uh, different um, than Commissioner Cohan's, and, and that is just um, timing, uh, in, in terms of timing. Um, my concern is that um, this application, a, as we know, um, it's going to, this is a major project that may um, expand or, or drag on over, um, uh, you know, a couple months as opposed to just one one meeting. And I just want to make sure that if we do this, that we have some um, comfort um, that we will be given an extension as well by the applicant if necessary, so that we're not put in a position where we hold off with the hearing and then we're up against the wall because we then have to make a decision uh, on the application. Yeah. 
when you use the term when you use the term you getting a, 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 a an extension that that's really not how it works at all they by starting the public hearing now they have so much time in within which to meet all the standards that need to be met to get a decision from you if they run out of time and you still have questions that's their problem yeah that's not a that's not something that you need an extension for you would take an action and if after all all their time has run out they haven't answered all your questions there are still outstanding questions they either have to withdraw and reapply and if they would and if they didn't then you would be compelled to deny the application you're not the reason they did this was because number 1 they got a wet, they got approval for their wetlands application last wednesday so you, you don't have anything that's reflective of all of those uh, all, all of the changes that are that came about to this plan because of the wetlands application also they got the peer review and they got planning and zoning comments last week that were extensive and need extensive uh, 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 response from them, which they didn't have time to do. If if you had started the public hearing tonight, you would have ended up, it, it would have been a, well, we're working on that, we're working on that, we're working on that, we're working on that. They've decided to wait until next month when some of this has been resolved. So you're not, the commission's not being put at a disadvantage and the public's not being put at a disadvantage in any way, shape or form by, by, by this. In my opinion, the commission and the public, on the other hand, the commission and the public would have been at a disadvantage if the public hearing had started tonight with all the outstanding questions. And, and I appreciate that response. Um, th thank you, um, Mr. Talbot. Uh, and I don't, I don't uh, disagree with anything that you said in terms of uh, of not starting the meeting um, or, or or the hearing tonight. I, I think that makes perfect sense not to start the hearing tonight. Uh, but I know in the past there have been times where issues have come up that we were not expecting, and we've politely asked an applicant if they would grant us an extension um, and for the most part they have um, uh, sometimes we may want to get a uh, an opinion from the legal department on something that has come up in a hearing or something to that effect um, and and that's my only concern i know we've done it in the past we've asked applicants in the past for extensions um, there's provisions in the um, in the statute itself that allows for extensions, but only at the um, with the approval of the applicant. Um, and so I just, you know, I, that, that's my only concern. I know it's come up in the past. I know we've asked for extensions in the past, um, and I, I just I think it'd be helpful to know to to have some level of comfort that the applicant will um, reciprocate if we need some extra time as well. Well, I, again, I appreciate your comments, but I mean, at the end of the day, if the commission, if, if we are quote up against the clock, or if the, I won't say we are up against the clock, the applicant is up against the clock. If the commission needs additional information on the application, uh, it would behoove then the applicant to uh, grant an extension. If they didn't grant an extension and the commission was still looking for information, it would be my opinion we would be very approve we would be very foolish to approve an application that we still feel we need additional information on so i i don't have a i don't have a concern with that quite frankly with that uh, thank you mr chairman sure uh with that if there are any other uh, commission members that want to make a comment we have i'd enter again i'd entertain a a motion to uh to close our uh, not excuse me not to close our public hearing to uh to con we're opening we to open our uh, public hearing which we have and to continue it to our uh, may meeting will the public have a chance to make comments uh not this evening no 
Again, commission members, any commission members that would uh, like to make a. Uh, 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 Mr. Chairman, um, if I may as well, uh, if the motion is to continue it to the May uh, meeting, I guess I, I don't know if now would be the right time or not, but I noticed that there's been a number of um, uh, applications that have kind of uh, been continued over the, the last few months. And, and as, it, as they pile up, it looks like you know, we probably have uh, two or three, maybe even four um, projects or applications that are going to be major applications um, with some uh, considerable uh, interest, I think. Um, my concern is that we get all of these and they all come up at the same meeting. And then we have three or four major applications that are coming up. Um, I'm wondering whether it might make some sense to either try to schedule one of these or two of these for a special hearing, or, or I, I don't know if there, if it's possible to do something like that, but I, I'm, I'm a little concerned that they're all gonna hit at the same time, and then we're gonna be trying to decide all of these in one hearing, which is gonna be, I think, unwieldy. No, it may very well be. That's something that we can address at the, uh, you know, at the appropriate time. Again, at this particular point in time, I'm just simply looking for a, uh, a motion to uh, continue the public hearing to uh, our May meeting. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we continue the public hearing for application 401-21. Do we have a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons, voting beginning by Mr. Vanoit. Yes. Mr. Fitzsimmons. Yes. Mr. Cohan. Yes. Mr. Matarazzo. Yes. And yes, so our public hearing is continued to our May meeting. Which brings us to our next item on business. It's a uh, site plan for the VIA at 23 South Colony Road. Again, Mr. Matarazzo, if you'd please note uh, all correspondence uh, for the record. Mr. Chairman, we have a uh, interdepartmental referral dated February 8th, 2021, um, signed by the, I believe it's a fire marshal, looks like. Uh, looks yeah, like I believe it's the fire marshal. Mr. T uh, yeah. Would you ask just members of the, uh, I guess, town staff when they, sign the uh their referrals if they also put their title right it's a copy problem yeah and again mr moderato if you please continue uh we have a um um correspondence to uh planning zoning commission from department of engineering in march 12th uh, 2021 we have a uh, correspondence dated March 24th, 2021 um, to uh, Carl uh, Davia, if I'm saying that right. Um, I, I believe so. Um, from uh, Thomas uh, Talbot. We have uh, inner office memorandum to Tom Talbot, acting town planner from Eric Kruger, senior engineer dated uh, April 8th, 2021. We have correspondence dated uh, April 8th, 2021 to uh, Allison Kapush, Kapushnitsky. Oh, that's a tough one. Kapushnitsky. Did I say that right? Uh, Not sure. Sorry if I, I butchered that. Um, Correspondence dated April 8th, 2021 to uh, Mr. Thomas Talbot. And a set of plans uh, dated, uh, received April 8th, 2021. And that looks like it. Thank you, Mr. Moderat. So if the uh, applicant would uh, please introduce uh, him or herself and uh, begin their presentation. 
Good evening, members of the Commission. My name is Matthew Niski, PE um, from Giuliano Associates at 405 Main Street in Yalesville. I'm here representing Mr. DeVia um, for his proposed uh, covered patio for his property at 1 and 23 South Colony Street and 26 Quinnipiac Street. Um, just a summary of the property, if any of you have driven by recently. Uh, excuse um, me, uh, Matt, if I could just ask you a question, are you uh, going to be able to uh, you know, present the uh, plans to the commission? Yes. Like if you're a presenter and uh, you'd be able to do that. Oh, sorry, I do not have PDFs on with me that I apologize for. Well, that's gonna make your presentation a little bit more difficult for the public now, isn't it? Uh, yes, I can get, uh, no, I can't. Um, I do apologize for that. I thought this was just a site plan, not a public hearing. Well, it, it's a it's a site plan, you're absolutely correct, but uh, it's conducted very much like a uh, public hearing where we, you know, ask uh, commission members, have the ability to ask questions, the public, we allow them to ask questions. And, uh, you know, we would expect that the applicant would have their, uh, you know, their plans available for the, uh, you know, the public to see. I Most do it would be if we, uh, you know, were in a uh, uh, in-person meeting. Okay. I do apologize for that. Um, I will start presenting if the commission prefers, and I can get PDFs in hopefully in two or three minutes, and then I could um, present them with my, the sure. rest of my presentation. Um, so this is the property is on the corner of South Colony Street and Quinnipiac Street in downtown Wallingford. Uh, the three properties can total 4,000, excuse me, 44,000 square feet. Um, they are all owned by DeVia Investment LLC. Um, so the staff asked us to combine the zoning tables for all three of them. The, um, the proposed plan is to improve the parking lot um, add actual parking spaces. Right now it is just an asphalt lot. There are no line striping. Um, and to add a 15 by 52 foot con or covered patio in front of number 23 Colony Street, excuse me, South Colony Street. Um, it will be covered. There is a um, small wall around it, so it will not be completely open. Um, so there is, it, it is kind of to promote the outdoor seating that has kind of become the norm for most restaurants today. Um, we do meet the parking regulations. The, um, it was brought to our attention that the regulations for restaurants have been changed to include only space for the public. Um, we meet parking regulations without the need to update that. So we left our parking table as is, which allows us to have seven extra um, spaces. So we do exceed parking regs. Um, both buildings on site will have two handicapped spaces available for them. The parking spaces for 23 South Colony Street are to the west of the building. That is just where the ramps are. Um, it does allow uh, the closest access to the building based on ramps. So um, that is why the spaces are over there. Also, um, handicapped sp accessible spaces, excuse me, on angled spaces do get fairly complicated with where the hatch is for it and everything. So we decided to move it to the rear of the property. The spaces for um, 23 and 30 Quinnipiac Street are right directly in front of the building allowing for immediate access to the site. And if you give me one second, if you can, I did just get the PDFs, so I can now present to the public. Good. Let me just make you a presenter. And I will attempt to share the correct screen. I apologize if I share the go-to meeting instead. <laughs> okay, so here is the site plan. which as you can see here, there are the two handicapped spaces to the west of the building, allowing for access for the handicapped ramp here. There are two accessible spaces here to allow for the access to this building here. Um, 
we are decreasing the impervious coverage on site via a couple grass islands. So we will be removing asphalt to allow for this. Um, per comments from town engineering, we did have to add some leak offs between the islands to allow for the continuous drainage without having to regrade the site. Um, the goal was to disturb as little as possible on the site, but also decrease impervious, bring it up to standards, um, you know, the 24 feet for drive aisles and everything with that. Comments from staff also requested, and per the town regulations, um, some arborvitaes up here on 23 and 30 Quinnipiac Street. There was a building there. Um, there possibly are future plans to build a building there. So in terms of screening, we did try to go with a an actual screening, but also something that isn't very expensive and elaborate that will be demolished in a couple of years when a building is constructed. Um, per town comments, we did allow the northern entrance along South Colony Street right here to become one way as it was originally designed. Um, so traffic will come in off Quinnipiac and South Colony Street and then loop back out to uh, the southern section down here for South Colony Street. There was a comment which I would just like to bring to the attention of some ADA ramps being non-conforming. Um, in talks with Mr. DeVia, the ramps have been um, kind of improved. There was some asphalt added and as the final uh, binding course for the asphalt has not been laid, when this is final paved, they will be brought up to ADA compliance. So all accessible routes on site will be ADA compliant. Um, and I, there, there is one exit down on the patio down here. So we did add bollards to do to separate the patio from traffic just in case uh, someone is a little careless in backing up or driving. They, the pedestrians in the building patio will not have to worry about traffic. Um, all signs will be labeled either do not enter stop at all respective areas. So up here will be a do not enter stop sign, do not enter stop sign. Up here to the Quinnipiac Street entrance will have some do not enter signs to promote the flow of traffic as well as line striping arrows to enforce that. And I believe that is it. Any questions? Uh, before I ask com uh, commission members questions, I just have just a couple things to clarify. You know, when I was looking at the, uh, you know, at the plans on the uh, on South Colony Street, you know, the uh, the asphalt that you, that you're going to uh, remove and create an island there. Yes. Uh, the thing that's it's I won't say it's T-shaped, but it's somewhat T-shaped. Uh, on that, uh, yes, right there. That is that's going to be grass correct because it's correct. not your other areas that are your other areas that uh where asphalt's being removed you know you have it designated as grass area but on that you don't have it designated as grass area i take it that will be grass you are correct yes all islands will become grass islands okay so that could be designated as grass and then just one you know last thing when i look at the uh Handicapped parking spaces. It would be on the west, uh, the west side of yes. the uh, of the building. Yeah, right down there. You know, if someone's pulling out of those spaces and looking to exit the property, you know, I notice you have you have an, you have two arrows. One arrow going north, the other one going south, just on the map. And obviously, you don't want anybody to go in that direction, correct? In That's terms of Exiting correct. Um, I do know when sometimes when these parking lots do get full, if you make this a one way and a car pulls down here to think they see a spot, instead of having to leave the parking lot and come back, they can just kind of turn around and go up this way. Okay. All right. I understand that. And I will. All right. Commission members have uh, any questions for the, uh, for the applicant? Mr. Benoit, I'll start with you as you're at the top of my list for some reason when I typed it. No comment. Mr. Fitzsimmons. And I can't hear you, Thank Mr. Fitzsimmons. No, I'm sorry. I was trying to unmute. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I do have a couple questions. Um, and I guess the first question probably, you know, this won't surprise anybody, is regarding the parking. So 
looking at your plan and I've got a, a copy in front of me, <clears throat> this parking plan is for the three buildings, correct? Correct. Do you own the building that currently houses Berkshire Hathaway? Do you know the address for that? I do apologize. I'm not sure exactly who's in which building. It's it's the building. It's a building with a decorative wall. That is they, owned by Devia Investments LLC. So it is under the same ownership as the other property parcels yes so your parking that you're providing provides parking for all three buildings correct you that's are right. all right the only thing is it's not labeled on the plan i'm thinking well that's your building i just want to make sure because you label the first building one south colony and then you label 23 south colony but the other building doesn't have a label and i'm thinking it is part of this right yeah i do apologize for that yes it is okay. part of okay. this it is the okay. So those parking requirements are included. Correct. On sheet three, they are in the bottom left of the plan near the sign table. It's nine, right? Nine South County. There was some, okay. I, I won't say issues, but with this being multiple parcels at one point, which then was reduced to the three parcels you see today. So the exact address of all the parcels is a little funky, depending on who you talk to. <laughs> No. Okay, I'll I'll accept that. I just want to make sure. So, all the, the this parking plan is for all three buildings. That, Correct. That's okay. And then on your plan it says advertising sign to be removed. Is an advertising sign going to be replaced at a future date, or there'll be no more direction uh, sign listing all the buildings at that same address? To the best of my knowledge, there will be no sign there. So okay. it, there is not plans to replace it at this time. All right. And then regarding your outdoor dining, um, the proposed 15 by 52 covered patio, which would be um, along Route 5 next to the former pizza place. Correct. You only have bollards in the parking lot side. You don't have bollards along Route 5. And I, I drove by that over the weekend and again today looking at it thinking, what type of screening are you proposed or not only just screening, but safety um, for having seating so close to route five the that section of route five is curved there is the sidewalk there other than that there is just a deck we'll call it a decorative wall for the patio um there was no bollards proposed for that there is no direct we'll call it traffic go, coming directly into it um that is also a one way so there shouldn't be any uh, shouldn't um cars pointing directly at it um, so we would just have issues with South Colony Street with cars coming southbound on that. The only suggestion request I would make is maybe adding a bollard because if somebody incorrectly comes in and it's an out of control vehicle, there's only two bollards to stop a car from striking seated diners. You see, if, you see what that is? Yes, if I may, are you talking along between the patio and South Colony, or would you like another Correct. bollard kind of? The, okay. I, I I guess I'm thinking of the bollard, and I, I I'm looking around. You know, outdoor dining is very unique right now, and and obviously this is a long term plan versus just you know the current pandemic. But I'm thinking, you know, an outdoor dining space to be approved, which is different. Everyone else is kind of doing it whatever they can. You're asking for permission now from us, it, because it's so close to Route Five with a sidewalk but also a curb cut that, you know, someone who used to going in that way might all of a sudden make a mistake and now they, you know, there's a situation. Okay. Um, I will have to confirm with Mr. DeVia on that, but I believe bollards, um, if we were to do five foot on center, if that works, should be adequate for protection for the patio. All right. And then the last thing I'd, I'd mention, thank you. The last thing I'd mention is the handicapped parking spaces because if you if you want to access that former pizza restaurant, and I'm sure it's a future restaurant, and you had a handicap pass, you'd have the only spots are quite a distance from that doorway entrance. And I wasn't sure if the ramp there is ADA compliant, you know, going to the sidewalk and 
is it possible to relocate one of your handicapped spaces to um, closer to route, the South County section? It was looked at splitting up the spaces. So there was one here and one over in, um, near South Colony. Both mm -hmm. ramps will be ADA compliant. Um, it just becomes when the parking for handicapped is angled, the regulations kind of restrict what can go near it. Um, so we would yeah. end up losing uh, t actually uh, two spots to move the handicapped over there. So in effort of trying to provide more parking, we um, try to keep them to the western part of the site. Okay. And then uh, because you, you described the future, the, the demol demolished building at the Arborvitaes, I guess that the idea would be on that, on that grassy area because it'll be planted with grass. There would be no, no outdoor dining, no signage, correct? That's just a true, you're counting it for landscaping for this or we there will be no signage there um, we are just considering it a vacant space right now um, the plan was to eventually put in a building but instead of leaving it asphalt rip up the asphalt now put a, some grass in and grass is a little easier to move around later rather than having to rip up the asphalt at a later date um, it will also look a lot nicer too yeah I mean it's a downtown it's a pretty key corner of the downtown area faces the gazebo so thank you very much for your answers thank you mr. chairman Thank you, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Mr. Cohan, questions for the applicant. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, just a couple of uh, quick questions, hopefully. I kind of want to follow up on a uh, uh, couple questions on the covered patio. Um, so the, the, the side of the patio along South Colony, it looks like that's going to be a four foot, eight inch wall. That is the separating distance from the patio to the property line. Okay, what, what, what kind of wall is going to be alongside there? It is proposed to be a 42-inch high wall, um, more of a decorative kind of a privacy wall. So when you're sitting there, you could look over it, but it's more of a uh, decorative wall to kind of just provide a little bit of privacy for the patrons. Okay, and um, uh, how is the patio going to be accessed? Will it be just from the uh, sidewalk, or will it be other ways to gain access to it? The plan is to have all the patrons enter through the existing building. There is an exit uh, right here, um, but that is proposed to only be an exit from the patio. So patrons will come into the restaurant, eat and then leave through this, either through the building or through this exit right here, which they can then come onto the sidewalk if they wish. Okay. And the, 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 again, the la last question. So the, the patio is going to be, to a certain extent, open air. It's not going to be fully enclosed. Correct. It is a covered patio. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Uh, Mr. Matarazzo, any questions for the applicant? No, sir. All set. Thank you. And Mr. Hine, any uh, any questions for the applicant? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. My main issue was uh, where the do not enter signs were going to be located, and I think that was addressed already, so thank you. Okay, good. And Mr. Talwood, uh, as far as any comments you have, I know that there were comments from both uh, from you and the uh, town engineer, and based on at least the uh, comments back from the applicant, it seems that those questions from both you and uh, our town engineer was uh, it was addressed. And now on the application, have any other uh, any other comments? No, except not to confuse the issue, the issue here, but it was in reviewing it. This really wasn't even, we really didn't even review it as an outside dining facility because it's it's really a building. So we we reviewed it in respect to uh, building coverage and everything because it, it is a building. It has it has roof and it's permanent roof and it has walls and everything. Um, no, I, I my comments have been addressed. I think uh, any comments of the town engineer that have not been addressed 
could be uh, could be made a condition of approval. And I think I think most of them have been. But if there are any that aren't, uh, the town engineer did make it clear to me that they could be they could be conditional. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tablet. And uh, again, this is not a public hearing, but we do give uh, the public an opportunity to comment on uh, on an application. And I'll look at the chat bar to see if there are any uh, any individuals that would like to uh, comment on the application. And at this point in time, I do not see any. And I'll just give a quick, uh, quick minute for anybody that would like to comment. Please just uh, type in on the chat bar that you'd like to comment or have a question. <coughs> All right, seeing none, at this point in time, uh, I, I would take it the applicant, do you have an opportunity to make any final comments? Certainly not obligated to, and I see you shaking your head that uh, you don't. So at uh, this point in time, if there's no further uh, questions from any commission members, I would uh, entertain a motion on the application. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve application 205-21 site plan for DeVea for a 780 square foot addition and site improvement improvements at 1 and 23 South County Road and 26 Quinnipiac Street as shown on plans entitled Land of DeVia Investments LLC number 1 and number 23 South County Road and 26 Quinnipiac Street dated 10-8-2020 revised uh, to subject I'm sorry subject to uh, one comment in inner office memorandum from the fire marshal to the planning and zoning department dated uh, March 12, 2021. Number two, comments in inner office memorandum from Department of Engineering to Thomas Talbot, uh, planner dated uh, March 12, 2021. Three comments in letter from Tom Talbot, planner to applicant dated March 24, 2021. Four, amending plans to reference South Colony Street instead of South Colony Road. Number five, comments in inner office memorandum from Eric Kruger, Senior Engineer, Water and Sewer Division to Thomas Talbot, planner dated April 8, 2021, and six, Bowers added per discussion with town planner. Thank you, uh, Mr. Benoit. We have a, a motion on the application. Do we have a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons, voting beginning with Mr. Vinoy. Yes. Mr. Fitzsimmons. Yes. Mr. Cohan. Yes. Mr. Matarazzo. Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, the uh, application has been approved. Uh, have a good evening, sir. Thank you very much. Have a You're good evening. You're welcome. Okay, it brings us to our... Uh, Next item, which is a site plan accessory apartment for uh, Chase at 99 Maple View Road. And uh, again, Mr. Matarazzo, if you would uh, please note uh, all correspondence for the record. Mr. Chairman, we have an interdepartmental referral uh, dated February 22nd, 2021, signed by the town engineer. We have correspondence dated March 18th, 2021 to Rodney and Pamela Chase from um, Thomas Talbot, uh, Act Planner, and a floor plan submittal with no, no date, uh, referencing the application. And we have interest right, interest right, uh, inter Inner office um, memorandum to Tom Talbot, acting town planner, from Eric Kruger, senior engineer, dated April 8th, 2021. And that would be it. Thank you, Mr. Bonarat. So if the applicant and or uh, its representative would please introduce themselves and uh, begin their presentation. Hi there, I'm Pam and this is Rod, Rod. Chassis. So we're not prepared to present online. I didn't realize that was a, a expectation. I wasn't told. I have papers in front of me and I submitted all the paperwork as I was asked to to all the members of the committee. Will that be sufficient? Well, I, 
from you know my standpoint when I was looking at it, I was having uh, quite frankly a kind of a difficult time looking at the information that you provided to us and then the sketch that you provided to us just how this all you know all works and I doesn't take much to confuse me but and I'm certainly a little confused on it just where uh, you, you've given us you know one sheet with your lower level uh, and it shows you know some area that's that's covered in you know in green that initially I assumed was your accessory apartment and then you gave us another you know another sketch of the accessory apartment and I'm just having a tough time matching it up okay so I, um, think, I mean it's difficult for me I don't know if it's difficult for other commission members uh, also and certainly for any members of the public that are you know that are looking without you know having that information in front of them you know, again, I it's an accessory apartment, and generally, it's you know these are I, I don't I hate to say the word routine, but generally uh, things that don't take very much time. But uh, you know, in this particular case, without at least for me, without the benefit of you know having uh, the information on the screen so you can make your presentation and I can ask you questions on it. I, I guess I I guess ask I'd ask other commission members just uh, if there's have the same issues or uh, what their general feelings are. So if I if I could just speak um, briefly I wanna, thank you. Um, I want to say the initial site that we shared with you shaded in green came back unapproved and so probably that wouldn't be the one to look at, but rather the one then that we submitted thereafter, which yeah, was approved. Yeah, well, and, yeah, I understand that, but I'm, I'm, okay. again, I'm trying to match that up with what you gave us, and I just can't do it. You're trying to match up the second one to the first one? Is that what I understand you're saying to me? Yes, exactly. Okay, so I don't know how that would match up either, and I'm not sure that it's even supposed to. So um, I try to create that with someone that works in your department based on what I understood. And after it wasn't accepted, we actually hired um, a contractor to go into the accessory apartment and measure out all of the rooms and create the plan that you see in front of you on the graph paper so you can see each room as it's laid out with its appropriate dimensions that comes to 681 square feet which also matches what's on the original um, property card yeah again when i'm again when i'm looking at it i i'm having a tough time doing that i guess i ask other commission members if they have the same issues that that i have and again maybe it's just me and i can't quite figure it out Mr. Chair, other, can I make a comment? Excuse me? Can I make a comment? I just want to show oh, you. Yeah. This oh, is right. sure. This is this is what I'm seeing. Yeah, that no, that's exactly what I'm seeing. I <laughs> so don't have what I'm trying, but I'm trying to figure out where that fits in on the uh, sketch of the uh, you okay. know of, of the property. That's, is this you don't have this piece of paper? I don't see what you're putting up on the screen. You can't see it. Well, uh, well, this is what we submitted. I don't. I'm not sure what you had. That's not what we submitted. That looks like something that was submitted originally, and then there was something else that was submitted, and we got a letter saying that it was approved. So it's. I don't believe, a, I, I, I don't believe you got a letter saying it was approved because it would be the commission that would be a, approving it. it was approved. I don't think there's anything that was approved. He just said it was okay. <clears throat> I guess, I, I, Mr. Fitzsimmons, I always look for you for a little. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am being too dense here. No, you're not. You're 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 not. But I, I guess I, I I I'm kind of making it out having been to the site. You know, I'm kind of making it out based upon this the the rough sketch. Um, right. But I, I, if I could, Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Oh, absolutely. Because it, it, it sounds, it, it sounds. If I heard correctly, is this an existing accessory apartment you're trying to 
legitimize or you're trying to build it? No. So when we built the house, um, we had it created for a mother daughter and my mother lived with us for many years and she's not there now. So um, we're, we just have this space that once we sell the house, we want it to be a legal accessory okay. apartment. So, so it's all there. Everything is there. And we're just trying to get it legalized. Yep. Okay. Mr. Chairman, then I, then, I, then I can tell you, I do understand because I, I obviously subject to our approval, it will, it will require a Z, ZEO inspection. Yep. So it, it's not, you know, it, it's different because it's, it's, it's not concept, it's done. That's, that's what I'm getting at. So I, I, conceptually, I understand what they're trying to submit and, and request approval. And I, I always appreciate when someone wants to make it legal um, so I, I could move forward with this sketch because any approval would be subject to a town inspection. Okay. That, that, if I could offer that, you know, I mean, All right. you know. Well, Mr. Fitzsimmons, I always appreciate it because you always add some clarity to our meetings. <laughs> so I thank you for that. I try. <laughs> oh, you do more than try. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. It was something else that was approved, not the... Um, the second set of plans that we submitted. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, that's quite all right. Okay, I will uh, then ask any uh, any commission members uh, that would like to make any comments uh, on the application or have any questions. Mr. Benoit, uh, you're up next. I'm fine with the information I have. Good, thank you. Mr. Cohan? I'm also fine with uh, the info. No questions. And Mr. Matarazzo. Uh, I Now that I have a better understanding of what's going on, I'm fine with it. And apparently, I'm the only dense one here. But <laughs> <laughs> with that, uh, I will uh, ask uh, well, is there any, uh, any members of the public that would like to uh, comment on the application. And again, I'm looking at the chat bar, and I do not see anyone. And I'll just give it a quick minute. And with this, I'll go back to the uh, the applicant. Uh, again, Mrs. Chase, do you have any final comments that you would uh, like to make? Ah, well, you got anything? I'm good. We're good. You're good? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. At this point in time, then, I'd uh, ask uh, there's a uh, motion on the uh, on the application. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve application 206 dash Two one site plan for Snyder for a. Oh, should we were on chase. Sorry, run one, run one, run one. <laughs> I was close, right? Run one. Um, I make a motion for uh, application two. Oh, it was two oh six dash two one site plan accessory apartment chase ninety nine Maple uh, View Road. Uh, Subject to inspection by the zoning enforcement officer prior to occupancy. So thank you. I apparently be rubbing off on you there, Mr. Van Hoyt. Uh, at this point in time, I'd uh, see if there's a, uh, a second on the application. Mr. Chairman, I'll second the motion. Good. We have a second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Voting beginning with Mr. Van Hoyt. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Yes. Mr. Cohan. Yes. Uh, Mr. Matarazzo. Yes. And also, I vote yes. Uh, your application has been approved. Uh, have a good evening. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Moving on, site plan accessory apartment Snyder at 3 Saddle uh, Lane. Again, Mr. Vinoy, oh, yeah. if you would please note all correspondence for the record. I'd love to, but I'd love to pass that on to uh, <laughs> our secretary. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Matarazzo, please. Mr. Chairman, we have a interdepartmental referral dated March 8th, 2021, signed by the town engineer. We have correspondence dated March 18th, 2021, uh, referencing the uh, site plan 207-21. Um, to uh, Ms. Snyder uh, from Tom 
Thomas Talbot, planner, a, I want to say a set of plans, but a plan dated um, April 5th, 2021, and a uh, interdepartmental referral dated March 4th, 2021, signed by the senior engineer. Thank you, uh, Mr. Matarazzo. And again, if the applicant and or its representative would uh, begin their, uh, introduce themselves and begin their presentation. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is John Gable. I'm with Connecticut Consulting Engineers, located at 1 Christie's Drive in Meriden. Uh, we are here on behalf of the owners and applicants, Jeff and Laura Schneider. We are proposing- And Mr. Gable, are you willing, are you able to, uh, Put your presentation on the screen of uh, the application. Yes. Uh, Good. Okay, I'm going to make you a presenter, and uh, there you go. Can you see that drawing? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. Good. Okay. So uh, our site is located at uh, Three Saddle Lane. Uh, it's about uh, almost an acre in size. Uh, it's located in the. Uh, <clears throat> RU40 zone. We are proposing to put an addition on the uh, existing dwelling. It's next to the garage right here. And we're also doing interior renovations uh, in this area here. This is the uh, uh, floor layout. I believe this is the first floor here. And this is the second floor here, showing the proposed addition and some renovations in the exist over existing garage here. So our, our application is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> uh, we do conform to the accessory uh, uh, structure code uh, about the 780 square feet. We are proposing only 766 square feet uh, of uh, the accessory uh, addition. And we also conform to the uh, uh, yard setbacks to front, side, and rear, and also the coverage for the uh, for the lot. Uh, like I said, it was a pretty straightforward application. Uh, I believe there was some correspondence from Tom Talbot to the uh, to the applicant, which he had. We, I guess we addressed uh, was addressed by the designer. Of the uh, I guess they had some comments regarding the uh, square footage, which was, which was addressed. Uh, an issue with the entryway with the common hallway area, which has been addressed, and something with a shared bathroom in this area. So uh, they, uh, I believe they all have been addressed with uh, Tom Talbot. I think the plans were <clears throat> submitted on Monday, uh, the 5th, I believe, April 5th, Monday. <clears throat> and I'd like to see if the commission members or staff has any additional comments. Sure. Well, before, thank you. Before I do that, Mr. Talbot, uh, again, your issues have been addressed. Is that correct? Yeah, so I'll accept for... Um, um, the, the only issue that can't be addressed on the plan and should be made a condition of approval would be that... Um, this accessory apartment can't be built unless they do the second floor addition over the existing house because that's the only way that the uh, proposed accessory apartment complies with the accessory apartment uh, regulations that's where the shared wall there that's where the shared the required shared wall will be so uh, i my suggestion is that if you're going to approve this accessory apartment it has to be conditioned with the fact that the second floor addition of the main house has to be done either at the same time or before the accessory apartment can be built. I, I hope that's clear. Hi, right, John Gable going with CCE. Uh, yes, we are fine with that condition of approval. Thank you. With that, uh, I'll ask commission members if they have any questions uh, for the applicant. Again, beginning with Mr. Vinoy. Uh, just a clarification, but if, if the inspection by the, the zoning enforcement officer do we really need to add that condition if it's already going to be approved? Well, inspected by the Z, the zoning enforcement officer. 
Well, I don't think you want to get into a situation where the zoning enforcement officer goes out and inspects and finds out that it's not in compliance. This, I, I'm not sure how to answer that. Uh, the zoning, the zoning enforcement officer typically typically goes out. My understanding is after the fact. Okay. Does that make sense? I mean, I, does that answer your question, Mr. Benoit? Not really, but that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Fitzsimmons. Uh, no questions. Uh, Mr. Cohan. All set. Thank you. Mr. Matarazzo. All set. And Mr. Hyde. No questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I have no questions. So at this point in time, again, I'm looking to see if anybody from the public would like to make any comments. And I do not see anyone in the uh, in the chat bar indicating that they'd like to make a comment. With that, uh, again, I just bring it back to the applicant for any final comments. If none, I'd uh, first ask the applicant any final comments that you'd like to make, sir. Uh, John Cable again from CCE. I have no comment. Good. Thank you. Okay, at this point in time, I'd uh, entertain a motion on the application. Mr. Chairman, I, I make a motion that we approve application 207-21, site plan for Schneider for a 767 square foot accessory apartment at Three Saddle Lane, as shown on submitted site plan, amended floor plan, received by the Planning and Zoning Department on April 5th, 2021, subject to one, construction of the proposed second floor addition to the main building before or at the same time as the accessory apartment. Two comments in inner office memorandum from Eric Kruger, Senior Engineer, Water and Sewer Divisions to Thomas Talbot, Planner dated April 8th, 2021, and three, inspection by the Zoning Enforcement Officer prior to occupancy. Do we have a motion on the application? Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Voting beginning with Mr. Benoit. Yes. Mr. Yes. Fitzsimmons. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Cohan. Yes. Mr. Matarazzo. Yes. And uh, I vote yes. Your application has been approved, sir. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a great evening. Good. Brings us to uh, item number seven. It's the site plan, New England. Uh, expedition, uh, 846 North Colony Road, and Mr. Matarazzo, would you please note all correspondence for the uh, for the record? Mr. Chairman, we have an interdepartmental referral uh, dated uh, March 4th, 2021, signed by the fire marshal. We have uh, correspondence uh, to Planning and Zoning Commission from Department of Engineering dated March 12th, 2021. Correspondence dated March 25th, 2021 to New England Expedition Wallingford LLC from Thomas Talbert Planner. We have correspondence uh, um, correspondence dated uh, do, 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 uh, received April 8th, 2021 uh, to Thomas Talbot from uh, New England Expedition, Wallingford, LLC. We have inner office memorandum to Tom Talbot, acting town planner, from Eric Kruger, senior engineer, dated April 8th, 2021. And that would be it. Thank you, Mr. Matarazzo. And again, at this point in time, if the applicant and or its representative would uh, introduce themselves and uh, begin their presentation. Yeah, good evening, everybody. My name is Greg Feldman, representing the New England Expedition in Wallingford. Um, I'm here with my father and partner, Barry Feldman. And, good evening, gentlemen, uh, ladies. A um, couple of other members of our organization, Matt, Karen, and, and Zach Feldman. And we are represented here by the BL Companies, who is the architect. We are proposing to convert um, some vacant retail space in our shopping center on North Colony Road to self-storage. The improvements would be primarily interior with some just light uh, changes to the facade for signage and some uh, coloring and whatnot. And um, 
it and Mr. Fowler, before I, excuse me, before I interrupt, uh, to yeah. apologize for interrupting you, but uh, no are you prepared to put your plans so we can uh, see them on the uh, screen? Yes, we have the plans available. We can answer questions or walk you through them. Okay, and uh, will you be a uh, will you be the presenter? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Andrew Graves from BL Companies, who I believe is gonna present on our behalf. Okay, if you could just wait one second so I can find him. He's hiding in one of these boxes. Up, upper upper left hand corner. It feels like Hollywood Squares or something. Yeah, I'm looking for you uh, on the. Uh, how could you? Stop that, please. I'm trying to find you. And again, your name again is Andrew Graves. Andrew Graves. Somehow I cannot. Oh, there we go. Graves. Yep, I I have you now. And I'm just going to hit you as a presenter. And uh, and then, Mr. Feldman, if you'd like to continue with your presentation, uh, and then we can let Mr. Graves take over, or if he'd like to, uh, you know, take take over now, that's fine. However, you'd like to proceed. Yeah, yeah, I I will let him present, and then if there are any, we can um, answer any questions or clarify anything after that. Okay, good. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, why is this so small on my screen? Let's see. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, so essentially, this is the site plan you see on your screen before you. Um, it's the uh, Barry's uh, Hallmark shop and the existing uh, SEER space that's being combined and converted into a self storage facility. Uh, the office. A self storage facilities are very simple from a programmatic point of view. There's an office where people would first approach the facility to rent a space. Uh, there's a small, very small retail component where people can buy tape and boxes and whatnot, but primarily that office area is typically 1,200 square feet where someone would come in and lease a container. Uh, and that would be on the front of the building, and I'll, I'll, I'll flip to the, to the floor plan shortly. Once someone has actually written the contract and, and leased a container, then access to the actual place where you bring your belongings would be around the back of the facility at the rear, it, where the existing loading docks are. Okay. On self-storage, 90% uh, of the people who come to store their uh, belongings in these facilities are in vans or pickup trucks or minivans. And so the access uh, is at grade. So in this particular case, and I'll show that to you when we get to the floor plans, we'd actually be renovating uh, the floor in the back and dropping a lobby down four feet because now the, the grade at the back of the building is four feet below the existing floor to accommodate a typical large retail facility where they're dealing with uh, large uh, uh, trucks that do deliveries. So in this case, because the uh, people using the facility are coming at grade, we'd be dropping the floor uh, to accommodate that at grade loading at the rear of the building. So from an exterior point of view, the renovations are, are very simple. We're keeping the the retail access for people first coming in to uh, rent the facility uh, under the existing gable with existing store entrances now. And then the uh, loading activities where people actually bring their belongings will all be located at the rear at, at grade, the modifications we're making there. So I wanted to start off with the elevations. Uh, modifications to the elevations are very straightforward. This top elevation, this is the east elevation. You can see we've added a pair of essentially that look like a, a sliding glass doors. You'd see at any uh, typical retail facility like a Walgreens or a Rite Aid, a pair of bi-parting glass doors, a canopy so people have weather protection when they're uh, you know unloading their car to bring belongings into the building. Uh, the, that's really the only change to the east elevation. And then we, we brought the floor down so people can load at grade. At the front, uh, we've kept the uh, entrance where the existing entrance is, of course, grocery stores have much larger sliding doors. So we're going to, I think it's important to keep that entrance where the gable is now. So the entrance is easy recognizable, recognizable when you um, enter the facility. Um, so it'll be maintained there. Um, we are adding two staircases for, for the egress because we're adding a second floor within the facility. 
So we're taking advantage of the existing glass storefront at this end of the building to put a store there. And then the other uh, uh, stair, egress staircase will be located uh, where Barry's uh, Hallmark shop is on the right-hand side of this uh, west facade down at this end. Um, as you know, self-storage facilities are obviously have, uh, I'll flip to the floor plan shortly, but they're filled with interior storage containers. There's not a lot of need for exterior glass. So on the north elevation where there's a band of existing windows, we're proposing not to actually take the storefront out, but just replace the existing storefront with spandrel panels. So putting new spandrel panels within the existing storefront. So to summarize, the changes to the exterior of the building are essentially adding this entrance here at the back with a canopy, replacing the current um, grocery store entrance with the office at the front under the main gable. Uh, we'll, we'll probably put a, a spandrel panel and close it up a little bit and have a stair at this north end of the west facade. And then where the uh, existing entrance uh, to the Hallmark shop, we'll be adding another staircase there and adding spandrel panels uh, where there's additional storefront that wouldn't fall within the context of the staircase. And then on the north elevations, we'll be adding spandrel panels where there's currently storefront glass there. So switching to the interior of the facility, uh, again, these self-storage places are very simple. Uh, we're adding two new egress stairs at each corner, like I just discussed. The one where the existing storefront is in this corner, a second one here at the corner of the Hallmark shop next to Petco. The new office where people would come in to, again, rent their, their uh, the containers would be centered under the existing gable entrance to the building. And then at the rear, we're, we're dropping down a uh, lobby four feet below existing floor. We're adding two elevators here. So you would enter through uh, sliding glass doors to the lobby, two elevators, one would take you up four feet to the main floor and then the additional uh, uh, 10 feet up to the second floor. Uh, section, uh, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, we're actually proposing to use a metal stud bearing wall system commonly used in self-storage facilities. So you have bearing walls that are 10 foot on center running uh, the length front to the back of the building. And then there's a uh, concrete composite floor deck that spans across the walls, which allows us to keep a very compact floor assembly so that we can fit the two stories within the existing facility without touching the roof or raising uh, the roof line. Um, there may be a need for a penthouse for the elevator once we get into the details of construction documents that may need some override capacity to make puncture the roof back here. But other than that, there's really no impact uh, the extra envelope of the building. Uh, so we'll be adding uh, storage containers above. The two staircases will be located each corner of the front of the building, uh, elevator, and a lobby at the rear. And that's it. That's the extent. Any questions or comments? Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I think that's the extent of your presentation. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, fine. Uh, commission members with... Uh, Questions for the applicant. Uh, Mr. Vinoy, any questions? I'm good. Thank you. Mr. Fitzsimmons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just um, a question. It actually has to do with the exterior versus the interior. Because this building is a corner lot between Route 5, Ives, and North Main Street Extension, is there any changes to the landscaping? Like, are any trees to be removed to make it more viewable from North Main Street, or is the plan to uh, leave the landscaping untouched? I don't believe there's any change, any, any intent to change any of the landscaping, no. Okay, and then the front is the traditional front, right? Because the back entrance for loading is not, not deemed to be the front, so that would there be no signage there as well? I would presume we're gonna have to add some directional signage, so it's clear when people rent the facility where, where they need to go to, for the loading area, so we would expect to be some minor signage indicating office and loading. But nothing okay. beyond that. And then I just it's a, it's more of a curiosity than a zoning. Is it is it geared towards residential use storage or another type like businesses? Well, typically people um, nationally on average sixty to seventy percent of the uh, storage is typically residential, and twenty to thirty percent typically is commercial. It could be traveling salespeople, contractors, or a variety of other uses. Um, but that's typically the, the mix nationally. And most of the people using the facility usually come within the five or six mile radius. So is, is, this, is this going to be geared towards residential 
to, to match the national standard. It's specific to all, 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 all people in the marketplace. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Mr. Cohan, questions for the applicant. Uh, just a couple of quick questions. Um, have you established uh, the operating hours yet? Uh, Barry, you want to answer that or Greg? Uh, um, no, we haven't. They would be most likely the typical operating hours for self storage, which I believe, you know, is till eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night, something like that. They don't run, you know, late, late hours into the evening. Okay. That is it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cohan. Uh, Mr. Matarazzo. All set. Mr. Hine, any comments? No comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And uh, again, I just ask any members of the public who like to comment. I don't see anybody's typed anything into our chat bar. And from my standpoint, I do not have any comments. So at this point in time, I think the applicant chooses not to make any final comments. That being said, I would uh, at this point in time entertain a uh, motion on the uh, on the application. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Ms. Fitzsimmons. I apologize. One one other question. I did, wasn't sure someone else would raise it. This application is strictly for inside self storage, right? So we're not going to see the parking lot with boats and campers. Correct. Would that That's be accepted? Would that be acceptable as a condition in your motion? No outside storage? Yes. I think your okay. gentleman answer is uh, your answer would be yes. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing further, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Again, at this point in time, uh, I don't see any further questions from uh, commission members. I would uh, entertain a, uh, a motion on the application. Mr. Chairman, I... I Make a motion that we approve application 208 21 site plan for 70,000 self uh, square feet self storage facility for the New England expedition at 852 North County Road, as shown on plans entitled Proposed Development 852 North County Road, dated March 5th, 2021. Uh, revised to April 7th, 2021, subject to one comments inner office memorandum from the fire marshal to the planning and zoning department dated March uh, 12th, 2021. Two, comments in inner office memorandum from Eric Kruger, senior engineer, water and sewer divisions to Thomas Talbot, planner dated April 8th, 2021. Three, comments in inner office memoranda from Department of Engineering to Thomas Talbot, planner, dated March 12th, 2021, and for no outside storage. Thank you. We have a motion on the application. Do we have a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Voting beginning with Mr. Benoit. Yes. Uh, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Yes. Mr. Cohan. Yes. Uh, Mr. Matarazzo. Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, your application has been approved. Gentlemen, have a good evening. Thank, Thank you, sir. Much. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. You're welcome. You. Okay, it brings us now to uh, our bond releases and reductions. And uh, Mr. Talbot, are all of these set to be released or reduced? Uh, both, we have both number eight and number nine are ready for release. They've been in inspected. Okay, do we have an application uh, on the releases of these bonds as recommended by uh, Mr. Talbot? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we uh, release the bonds for application 412-09, special permit, Sonic Restaurant, Masseet Family Partnership, 1033 North Colony Road, and application 205-17, site plan, Govea, 1339 uh, Whirlwind Hill Road. We have a motion to release both of the uh, bonds. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Extensions? And with that, uh, moving on to uh, reports from uh, office, officers and staff, we have uh, ZBA decisions for uh, March 15th, 2021. Does anyone have any uh, 
questions on that? And seeing none, we'll move down to uh, ZBA notice for the April 19th meeting of 2021. Any questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Fitzsimmons. Mr. Chairman, number four, I wasn't sure um, where the storage container would go considering it's fronting on route five. Sure. And I know we have Mrs. Torrey is on the uh, on the call. Uh, Mrs. Torrey, do you have uh, some comments on that and provide Mr. Fitzsimmons with some information, if you would, please? And I think you're going to have to unmute yourself. How's that? Pardon me. Um, the applicant has proposed two storage containers at 654 North Colony. That is a through lot. Therefore, it's fronted and the, on what would be the oriented to the rear and the front with streets. So therefore, it has two front yards. Right. So actually, they're proposing to have two storage containers. I believe one is eight by 12 and one eight by 20, if I'm remembering, or uh, pardon me, eight by 40 and eight by 20 um, to the site, which would be located in proximity to Old North Colony Road which happens to be a front yard, but it is in the rear of the orientation. Um, and again, they need a front yard variance to do so, to conduct a pool and spa business. And that will be the uh, container for their storage and, and their equipment, you know, for, for their sales. So. If I might through you, Mr. Chairman, it's, it's already there. It's uh, unaware of, of that. It, it it should not be there yet. Um, but I, I I can't comment as as such. They are proposing to add them. Um, the site contains a, a primary building. It was a uh, the lumberyard type type building, and then a small accessory building, which this is proposing to use as their site. Um, and then the storage units were supposed to be brought in after approvals. <laughs> yeah. All right. I know it's I know it's a ZBA decision. I just, you know, it's it's the storage containers on Route Five is probably what I was concerned about. And the spot is unique because, as you indicate, it's got frontage on both. So just that's correct. Yeah. I mean, the they ZBA are in the rear. Pardon me, Mr. Chairman. They are, uh, they are, Commissioner they, uh, Fitzsimmons. They are in, in fact, in in what would be oriented as the rear, but still considered a front yard. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Any other commission members? Okay, moving on to our uh, zoning enforcement log. First one is uh, that we have is the uh, closed complaints. The other one is the uh, current complaints. Uh, again, commission members with any questions on either one of those logs. And I see most people shaking their heads that they do not. Okay, moving on to uh, number 13, which is uh, discussion on some food truck uh, regulations for wineries we have uh, some proposed language that would provide that was provided by mr uh, mr tablet on the uh, winery food trucks and i'll give mr tablet just the opportunity to kind of quickly go over what uh, what he's uh, what he's presented to us okay most of this is just based on previous conversations and previous input from from the commission and uh what these regulations would do would 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 they're specific to um uh mobile food vendors on winery properties and what it would do is it would limit under under the current proposal they would be limited to thursday through sunday um, they have to be on private property, uh, can't be located within a, a required uh, parking area. Um, 
must you must have two spaces uh in, in addition two additional spaces for the food truck um and it goes on it goes on and if you look at it you'll see that it, it, it with the exception of the first couple of standards it's reflective of the existing regulations you have in uh in other commercial zoning districts it's it's essentially the same language um and i i did i keep doing this and i'm not sure whether i should but i keep including this section about deletions from the residential districts there are there are some some of these existing regulations are in residential districts are extremely um, permissive and I think could be a problem. Um, and then there was discussion about uh, the same kind of thing for breweries and cideries and, and, and uses like that. And when I look through the regulations, it, it seems to me as though there's already language in all of the commercial zoning districts for these food trucks that could be applied to breweries and cideries. Um, because the only place they're permitted under current regulations would be in those commercial districts. There's no um, there's no provision for a cidery or for a brewery in a residential district. The only operation of, of that type that's permitted in a in a in a in a residential district is a winery. So um, unless there's something in the existing regulations for um, uh, non-residential districts that you hope to change, um, it looks like what you have might might suffice. Thank you, Mr. Talbot. Again, is 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 Mr. Talbot explained one of the items we were looking at and had discussed at some prior meetings was right now under our regulations food trucks are not uh, you know permitted uh in in the wineries and what this attempts to do is to uh you know allow the food trucks at wineries you know for under on a limited basis it's outlined in the new section that uh mr talbot has uh has put together for us so I guess I'd ask, uh, as far as commission members, what their uh, what their thoughts may be uh, on this. This is something that they'd like to see. And I'll start with Mr. Uh, Mr. Vinoy. Uh, I don't have too much other than I, I think this is uh, another good step in the right direction for us. Mr. Uh, Fitzsimmons. I would agree with the vice chairman. Uh, Mr. Cohan. Um, I would agree with Mr. Vinoy and uh, Mr. Fitzsimmons as well. And I'd also like to uh, thank uh, Mr. Talbot for that explanation on the breweries and cideries because, quite honestly, I was concerned about that and I was a little confused, but I th his his explanation explained it quite clearly to me. So I, Tom, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohan. Uh, Mr. Matarazzo. Uh, we just follow suit with agreement with the uh, other commissioners. And Mr. Hine. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I, I appreciate it. Um, uh, I, I appreciate the effort and I think we're moving forward in the right direction. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, just um, to make you aware, uh, I just received a text from somebody uh, who was concerned that was trying to watch the meeting and was unable to view it on YouTube. Um, apparently, it's not being recorded live on YouTube. I don't know if that's a problem or not, um, but I think... <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm not sure if it's on YouTube live. It's on, you know, the and I'll check with that, but it's on uh, you know, the uh the town public access. Uh but I'm not sure if it's on YouTube live. I believe it's you know this is live stream of the meeting will be available on that. Unless yeah. yeah, no, I see down here it just says, yeah, like uh will be also available to town on channel. 
Yeah, I see that it says live stream. I that's something, uh, Mr. Hine. I'll have to uh, uh, look into. I'm not aware. Of that. Yeah, I just I just wanted to make you aware of that because I I just got a text and I thought. Sure I I appreciate that. I will uh, we'll look into that. Again, I know it is uh, you know live on uh, you know the public uh, whatever public access. But and it's being recorded. Excuse me. And it's being video recorded, yeah. so at the very least, you can uh, uh, look on YouTube. But again, if someone was looking to, uh, you know, access the meeting live on YouTube, that obviously, uh, if we're saying it's there and it's not, that creates a problem. Okay. So I guess at this point in time, as, as far as what's being proposed by, uh, you know, Mr. Talbot on the winery to food trucks, uh, I take it everyone would feel comfortable to have this uh, at our next meeting. Uh, as a uh, public hearing. Uh, but you got that 35 days when you have to notify all this. So you're probably looking at, you're probably looking at June. I have to send it out to all the. Okay, so this has this has to be notified. Or at okay. least one of them. All right, so this then would be scheduled for our, uh, June. our June meeting. And then I, I, I guess, go ahead. I just, I just have one uh, 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 clarification issue. Do you want to just do the winery section, or no? That's, are that's you the, the first. The first. The first thing is just the wineries. So you're not the, interested. No, in the, the first deletions. thing. The first. No, the first thing is just the winery to see if we want to schedule the winery. Then we're going to go to the next. We're, okay. 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 So then we're going to schedule this for, uh, you know, for June, and then flipping to the uh, second page that Mr. Talbot uh, had proposed here is to delete the food trucks essentially we're deleting them from you know the residential uh, residential areas uh as well as the uh i guess it's the uh central limited business district as well as the yalesville limited business district i believe uh, so th again that's something that uh, i think we want to give you know some consideration to as well as as far as where we uh as you drop drop down to existing regulations in uh, you know non-residential districts as we go farther down you know it lists various commercial districts that we uh, that they would be allowed in uh, I guess the one thing that I'll I'll bring up and and I don't at this point in time look for uh, you know any commitment from any commission members and mr. Talbot correct me if I'm I'm wrong. The town and for our town center district, the food trucks would not be allowed. Is that correct? Because that's when I look at the various districts, it's not listed. No, that's well. I was asked not to put it in there. Yeah, no, I uh, just that's just because, my question. No, they're permitted, but there there's there's a difference. No, I think they're permitted. I'm gonna have to bear with me here. Um, I, I believe they're permitted in much the same manner as uh, as uh, as all the other uh, non-residential districts. But let, let me make sure uh, because I know that um, I think by. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. Um, food trucks. Let's see. Uh, bicycle parking. Um, um, oh, 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 what is it? All right. Um. Huh. Oh yeah. Okay. Following accessory uses are permitted. Um. Well, Limited activities associated with special events and sales are permitted at, at, at a permitted business. 
uh, including outside sales and merchandise, special events that are going to mobile food vendors, or the serving of catered beverage, uh, catered and foods or beverages. Um, I think I thought, thought it was somewhere else in here too, but um, I'm going to have to look. I think that's something that we're going to, uh, you know, to have to look into, uh, you know, to see uh, it, it, if we're going to have to look at to see if our regulations uh, allow that or not. And then whether they do or whether they don't, then I think that we need to have a, a discussion on that to see if, in fact, that that's something that we do want to allow if they're not uh, if it's not allowed other than uh, apparently for perhaps special events the, the other consideration is if i'm not mistaken uh, by town ordinance right. by town ordinance in the center of town you can't locate a food truck within i think 500 feet of an yeah. existing restaurant so that's a yeah. that's another consideration but that's not a zoning consideration there's something else in there. Yeah, that's something I think, as we said, that's something that we're going to need to uh, we need to look at and then have a uh, you know a further discussion on that. But I think as far as the food trucks and wineries, uh, again, that would be on our uh, on our agenda for uh, for our June meeting. Any other comments, commission members uh, would like to uh, make on food trucks at the moment? And I see everyone shaking their heads no. So we will. Uh, we will move on to our next uh, item on our agenda, which is uh, Connecticut General Statutes uh, 824. It's the uh, purchase of property at 100 uh, Barnes Road. And again, Mr. Matarazzo, if you please uh, read uh, again the correspondence that we've received from the uh, from the mayor's office. Chairman, we have a uh, correspondence from Office of the Mayor dated April 7, 2021, signed by Mayor William Dickinson. We have correspondence from Office of the Mayor dated April 6, 2021, um, from Wallingford Town Council, signed again William uh, Dickinson, Mayor, and a uh, plot plan um, image. Uh, two plot plan images attached to that. Okay. And again, this is uh, is the letter from the mayor indicates the uh, town of Wallingford is interested in purchasing pro purchasing property at 100 Barnes Road uh, to repurpose the building to be used by the Wallingford Police Department. And then, as Mr. Matarasso indicated, there's a, a letter uh, uh, attached to the uh, town council because they would need to act on this. Uh, uh, this item, and there's also a map. Are there any uh, commission members that may have any uh, any questions? Yes, Mr. Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, <laughs> just one question: um, Is a police station a permitted use in this zone? Um, I believe it is because I believe it's government buildings, yeah. but I believe Mr. Talbot is going to be thumbing through the uh, our regulations right now. I believe I looked and saw that it was, but yeah, we will. Almost positive. Uh, 4.9. Governmental buildings, facilities, and uses. Yes, it's listed as a permitted use requiring site plan approval. Okay, thank you. Any other commission members? Seeing none, I would uh, then entertain a uh, motion on this uh, on this item. Mr. Chairman, uh, I make a motion. Um, what, so what, what is really the motion? Just acceptance of the letter? You're, you're approving an eight. Uh, yeah, you're approving a, an eight twenty four action, which essentially, which essentially involves you um, um, stating that the 
that the proposed use of the property is in conformance with the town's zoning regulations and plan of development. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I make a motion that we uh, approve uh, the CGS 8-24 purchase of property 100 Barnes uh, Road as it conforms with our local regulations. We have a uh, we have a motion by uh, Mr. Vinoy. Do we have a second by Mr. Fitzsimmons? I'll second. But I'll, yes, go ahead. I'll second. But should we also reference the the plan of conservation, plan of conservation development? and development? If you'd As like amended. to add your uh, motion, amended, <laughs> I'll second his amendment. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have a second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Extension. Okay, moving on, we have one last item. That I'd like to entertain a motion that we add uh, to our agenda. The item number 15 is the six year capital and non recurring budget for 2021 to 20. Uh, 27. And uh, Mr. Matarazzo, if you would please uh, just note the uh, letter from the uh, office of the mayor for the record, as well as the uh, as well as the budget. Mr. Chairman, we have uh, correspondence from office of the mayor dated March 22nd, 2021, to the Wallingford Planning and Zoning Commission from Mayor William Dickinson, Jr. Um, and we have the uh, proposed uh, six-year capital budget as well um, and just some notations uh, along with that any uh any commission thank you mr Monterazzo. any uh, commission members with any questions on the uh, on the budget um, yes mr cohan yeah, just it's not really a question. I don't recall seeing this in my packet. So um. yeah, no, it uh, it wasn't. Uh, I think if you look at the somehow there was. Uh, I sent an email. It was uh, an email. It was in uh, Jay. It was an email, uh, Mr. Cohan, that uh, Mr. Talbot sent out. You know, I apologize. It, it somehow there was a uh, there was just a, a slip up. We should have had this earlier. As you can see, the mayor sent it to the, uh, you know, the planning office on March 22nd. And for some reason, uh, it was not included in our, uh, in our packet. Okay, good, good enough. Any other uh, commission members? All right, at this point in time, I'd uh, entertain a motion to, uh, Currently, we're accepting the uh, six-year uh, capital and non-recurring budget for 2021 through 2027. Mr. Chairman, do we have to make a motion to add it to the agenda first and then act oh, yeah. on it? Uh, thank you. I, I had asked for, uh, I think I asked, you started to. I started to ask for a motion, <laughs> and then I just went off the rails. I started to do it and then you went on. So I just said, I'll, I'll wait. So Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we add the six year capital and non-recurring budget 2021 to 2027 to our Monday, April 12th, 2021, seven o'clock planning and zoning commission agenda. Thank you, Mr. Benoit. Do we have a second now? I'll second that. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Any uh, abstain? Uh, anybody abstaining? And I see none. So now, at this particular point in time, Mr. Vanoy, you're up for the a motion to uh, to approve. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the six-year capital non-reoccurring budget for 2021 through 2027. And do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fitzsimmons. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? I'm, I'm going to abstain. I, I didn't see it. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cohan abstains. Thank you. All right. With that, uh, believe it or not, we're at the end of our uh, of our agenda. So at this particular point in time, uh, yes, Mr. Cohan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I do have one 
uh, item I'd like to bring up before we uh, uh, adjourn. Um, this is the zoning text amendment for the IX and I-5 zone. And based on, <clears throat> you know, the uh, letter that uh, was signed by Hendershot, Ryan Dickinson, and Janice Small, they were going to have uh, language and a, a work product to us by March 31st. Um, and I'm just wondering, you know, if anybody has any uh, status on where those folks are with, you know, the, the zoning text uh, verbiage they're, they're working on. I didn't expect to see it for this meeting, but, um, you know, March 31st is coming up. No, I understand that. I had uh, it, uh, had a uh, uh, approach the mayor on that to ask where the group of four is on, uh, you know, what they had uh, presented to us. And again, there was a, uh, there's a letter from the mayor to, uh, you know, to the Planning and Zoning Commission that was uh that was uh emailed to all commission members so you you should have that uh, mr cohan uh in your email mr fitzsimmons i see you raising your hand i'm going to raise my hand he is not on the email distribution you're kidding me i, I no i was just looking at it i'm not calling i'm not calling anybody out but look around, <laughs> look around jim i just for whatever reason i'm looking i don't see jeff's address on the email we got today I have to apologize then, Mr. Cohan. Uh, you uh, obviously you didn't uh, you didn't receive that. You didn't receive the capital budget. Uh, and again, I, I apologize. Yeah. Make sure we have that corrected. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, if somebody could forward that to me, I'd appreciate it. I'll do it right um, now. Thanks, Jim. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess I can uh, I, I can read this to you, uh, Mr. Cohan, if you'd like. Uh, no, I'll I'll, I'll okay. read it if the, if there's a no. Uh, yeah, no, it, it explains because uh, I believe it was last uh, beginning of last week or so. Uh, you know, I approached uh, First Star uh, Corporate Council and uh, you know asked her just exactly what the status was, and then uh, I had a discussion with the mayor also on that. And I did ask him to have uh, you know an update uh, given to the uh, given to the commission. Okay, thanks. I'll I'll read the note. Appreciate it. Well, that's provided we're able to get it to you. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll correct that. And again, I, I apologize. No problem. So at the end of the day now, or at the end of the evening, uh, we're at the end of our meeting. So at this point in time, I'd uh, there's no other comments, questions from commission members. I'd, indicate, uh, I'd rather entertain a motion to uh, adjourn our meeting. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we... Adjourn the Monday, April 12th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. And that's Mr. Uh, Vinoy, not Mr. Matarazzo, correct? Correct. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. Uh, do we have a Are second? you want to do it for me? <laughs> do we have a second? I'll second that. Mr. Simmons seconds it all in favor? Aye. 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 Both abstentions were adjourned. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Have a, Thanks. Good, have a good night, everybody. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night. <laughs>